All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Semen on Film. It is the first of March, well, the fourth of March, the first week of March. There you go. And today we're getting into the deep, deep, deep discussion of the 1982 horror classic, The Thing. Now, this movie had a $15 million budget and made $19.9 million in 1982. Yeah. Considered yeah. a flop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was shit on by almost, well, not by almost everybody. I mean, it was everybody shit on this movie. Hmm. It got terrible reviews. It got very, very mistreated. Uh, mm-hmm. Oddly enough, it's, it is, uh, it's, uh, it's, turned into a cult classic and it is truly a fantastic movie uh but just to give you an idea of uh like what it was up against in 1982 and 1982 was a juggernaut for uh uh, box office smashes let's just say every year of the 80s okay (laughs) (laughs) Joe. but you had a number one et followed by raiders of the lost ark rocky three on golden pond and an officer and a gentleman with the top five hottest movies, highest grossing movies of 1982. Uh, anybody here not have has not seen this until uh, the show? I think this was. I might have seen like pieces of this before, but I feel like this was my first real time watching it. Okay, right. Honestly, on, right on. I know that oh, H. C. McCready and uh, I. C. I've seen it about a baker's dozen at least. Um, last yeah. time I watched this movie was on deployment with H.C. McCready. <laughs> <laughs> Mount um, 22. Uh, Adam Sickle and Snow Brita. <laughs> great, <laughs> great names. Great names. Uh, Good job, Adam. Adam, you I'm sure you've seen this, right? I've seen it, yeah. Okay, and then Sabrina, this was your no. first? Yeah, absolutely my first time. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I, I I chose this because I was hoping that you hadn't seen it yet and you were yeah. going like to have your mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess for the, 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 I want the newer people, that are the, the first timers, what would you guys think overall? You want me to go first? Or you want? Yeah, yeah. You know, talk over each other. Well, oh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't want to jump in. Let's find it out, Andy. <laughs> I mean, we can. But you, you know. want to go? You want to go? I'll let you go. Oh, um, yeah. Not polite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I just didn't want to talk over anybody, but yeah, I think. Um, Why are you, know, you talking was, over a woman right, right now? I'm just kidding. <laughs> just because it's Women's History Month, all right? <laughs> I'm gonna play those games, anyways. Um, yeah, it was funny. Um, some friends of mine, we were talking two months ago or whatever, before or after a D session, saying how like uh sometimes the narrow, you know, on their like flick and Fridays when they do like the throwback movies and stuff like that'll show this film and how like the old school vibe, like in the dark theater at night, like movie still hits. And uh yeah, kind of watching it this evening here on a rainy Norfolk night. Yeah, I, I get it, man. It's good. Nice. And uh, Sabrina, what do you think? Um, you don't have to give me your rating, but you know, just be like, oh, yeah, yeah. I found it entertaining. Um, I don't know. I mean, there was lots of, it was gorier than I anticipated. Like, it was gross. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was real gross at some point. So, uh, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it, but, <laughs> but um, it was fun to watch the action and um it kept you guessing just a little Were bit you on your edge of your seat the whole time i wouldn't say i was on the edge of my seat the whole time but i did probably talk more than throughout it than adam appreciated i'm sure like i was just like <laughs> wait why is this happening but where are they doing that for and just i had a lot of questions throughout the entire thing all right all right and uh, I guess uh, 
the rest of you guys kind of give me your, what your thoughts were on it, or how, how do you feel about the movie anyway? You know, I don't know. Just, uh, you know, I know you've seen it a thousand times. So, I mean, it's kind of tough to really get your, you know, how'd you feel about after your 999th <laughs> time watching it? <laughs> Does it still hold up as the first day you saw it in 1982? I think, uh, I think for me, yes. Uh, but, but I really like this. I, I don't know if you can tell. Uh, I'm a big fan of this, like, big <laughs> fan of this movie. Um, yeah, yeah I, I know it's hard to tell. Um, I think I have two DVD copies. I don't know how that happened. Um, but I do. In any event. The just-in-case copy. It, it, <laughs> it does still hold up. And it's, it's funny you say it's gross, um, because it, it was like the first big budget gross out movie. But if you look at it by some of the stuff that's out, it's tame by today's standards uh, for a lot of it. Um, Cause it's just over the top gore. It's, you know, it's, it's not sawing off your ankle on screen gore. Yeah. But um, like almost a slasher, but not. Yeah. And it, it's, it's gross. For me, it pushes all the right <laughs> buttons. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I did want to point out a couple things, and I'm, I'm not stealing, because uh, I figured Chris was, would appreciate it. I like looking at the movies, too, what came out that year, and some of the things that beat this, in addition to what, uh, what Joe mentioned. So you had First Blood, Six Pack. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Toy, and Zap. Okay. Uh, what about Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Was that 82? I think that was 81, man. Okay. I think. But some of the, the, the mm -hmm. three that I wrote down that I thought, uh, or excuse me, two that I wrote down that I thought, hey, maybe you'll recognize, maybe you won't, that it uh, did beat. One was Megaforce. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. And the other was Beastmaster. Oh. So it actually did better overall. The Mega Force <laughs> and Beastmaster. If you could imagine. Titles like that. I don't Nothing understand like carrying why. around ferrets in your loincloth. Just yeah. saying. Not so not weird. to, you know, Mark Singer. Mark yeah. Singer the conversation here. But uh, yeah. anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. That's all I got. Yeah, the grossest the movie got uh, shit on a lot uh, in the uh, from the critics because of the over-the-top goriness. <clears throat> I let that kind of gore go when it's like alien related gore like right. alien blood and stuff you know i mean even though at the time it was you know replicating human beings and dogs and stuff yeah, and do yeah but dogs it's, and stuff yeah it's, but it wasn't like a like a human person having right. like yeah getting their eyeball their cut out or like, something like, ridiculous yeah. it's, it's different you don't feel yeah. it in your bones the same way this was just right. like visually stimulating in a gross way <laughs> but are you a fan of this movie very artistic adam are you a big um, fan of this movie or just kind of like man it's a good movie i guess my, my arc went with the thing like the first time i i watched it i wasn't that into it and then the more i watched it i was like this is a great fucking movie <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for those people that have maybe not have, have not seen this before, uh, it's basically an alien crash lands in Antarctica, and uh, it mimics by absorbing the assimilation. host assimilation, it's and uh, <clears throat> huh? Perf it, it's a perfect assimilation, and uh, it, it you know it and then it has to survive. So I mean, it's got to constantly be feeding like any other living organism and taking over everybody else one person at a time and the whole movie is basically a bunch of dudes that just can't trust each other because one of them could be an alien two of them could be an alien hell we don't even know since you said that i wrote at the top of the page what if something like this happened on our ship we're out on deployment <laughs> we'd all be dead yeah we'd all be dead there is no <laughs> um herschel Yes. Is there a chance you could probably have helped those Swedes out on the gun range? <laughs> uh, it is. I, I mean, I, I would like to point out to Adam, who hates revolvers, yeah, you got no this poor Swede who's tossing grenades and, and lead downrange like nobody's business. He gets taken out by one well-placed shot 
from a 38 special. I'm I just put, I put in my notebook, can Herschel hit that headshot? <laughs> <laughs> All I'm Every saying day. is this movie could have been 10 minutes long if they would have just shot that dog. <laughs> <laughs> if they were you know? shot. Um I do like and, the very opening when it says uh <clears throat> The very opening, it just says Antarctica winter, 1982. That's it. Dude, it could be Antarctica spring. I wouldn't know any difference. <laughs> yeah. um, this movie, this is, I've watched it a few times, but uh, I like it better now. And this movie bothers me. I don't get scared by movies, really, but this one kind of bothered me. I, I forgot the great, like, scenes of when they turned into aliens. You got the, you know, you got Wilford Brimley's head up there on an alien body and stuff. I said, that's pretty cool. And I forgot. I was like, man, I wonder how they did all this shit. You know, somebody's over off to the side and they're all just like hitting pumps and shit like this to make all the arms wiggle and things like that. But uh, I, I really love that. And uh, I just thought I was like, I had this on VHS. I don't have it on DVD. I did have it on VHS as a kid. I think we had the uh, Wilford Brimley edition sponsored by Quaker Oats. Sponsored by Quaker Oats. Uh, before yeah. the beatus, I think they call it. Before he got diabetes, he was mm -hmm. eating apple cinnamon Quaker oats, and um, <laughs> without the oats. yeah, it, I, I don't know about you guys, but uh, going to Antarctica is not something I've ever wanted to do, and I still don't want to do it. <laughs> it's like who, who's going on this? Oh, I want to go on an expedition and be there for seven months and live in a fucking building like this, you know? And it's like, <sighs> can I piggyback off of that? Oh. Know? Yeah, now we're we're in the Navy now. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, when you guys watch these movies where they're in like isolated locations like this, do you kind of like put yourself in like you you know what yeah. the environment is like based on your naval experience and living them inside yeah. of the ship for <laughs> so long? Yeah. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be a ship; it could be like a research facility. Just know that they're in isolated inside of some thing yeah you yeah can, like put yourself you, you could kind of put yourself in their shoes yeah i can feel that mentality just instantly i i do and for something like this i think it, it makes it it makes it better because you're like well why don't they just leave well they can't yeah so i mean yeah. you put it here alien you put them on a ship they got nowhere to go there's there's a couple that have done it on a, a submarine so where are you going to go? Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I guess I do a little bit. Not um, that I'm dressed like Kurt Russell or anything, but yeah. <laughs> How long were uh, the aliens there? How yeah. long did, when did that ship crash there? How many was it? Thousands 000, of years? 100,000 years ago, at least. That's crazy. 100,000 years. Did you not hear the shout out to the Chariot of the Gods, man? Yeah. I, they that was, I, they I, own I, South America. <laughs> I was wondering how early was that guy turned into one of those things? Like, was so, he just spewing that out, or like, how do we know when he turned? Here, that's that's a good question, and I'll, I'll tell you what, man. I went back and watched. Um, that's the only Cisco reason and I Ebert's. Watch it again, too. No, no, no. Well, it's you don't really get any clues except what mm -hmm. you make up your on your own, you know. Yeah. But I did go back and watch uh, Siskel and Ebert's review from when this came out in 82 and they split on it believe it or not it one thumb up one thumb down mm. uh ebert hated it absolutely hated yeah. it siskel <laughs> uh, said you know if you get through all the muck it's a good movie with a lot of paranoia uh, excuse me paranoia and mistrust yeah but um i often wondered little things like when they go to the ship and norris who you don't see a whole lot as being a man of action yeah He's like, I'm going too, and he's that. You know, it makes you wonder: does does he is he the alien at this point, and he just wants to see if the ship is still intact? Can I use it, or am I reading way too much into it? I don't know. Um, all I'm saying is that they they find out this this is very infectious, right? And there and the guy makes the recommendation: this is what I think is happening. It's spreading this way. I think everybody should prepare their own meals. And we, I think we should eat out of cans. But let's all use the same knife to get the blood samples. <laughs> he wiped it on his pants. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he was sterile. It looked like he was wearing dungarees. Well, at one point in time, Wilford Brimley has the uh, the alien like 
as it was like kind of like mid absorption. And oh. he's like using a pencil then, with an eraser. Yeah. And he's point, like, yep, they're here. You can tell. Then he puts it into his like lick, like <laughs> presses it on his lips. I'm like, yeah. How come nobody in there threw up instantly when he did that? <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris and I are in the biotech industry. And all I could think of, I was like, that dude at least has to double glove. But he's not, he is not wearing enough gloves. I wrote, I wrote that he was, he was wearing gloves. He was wearing gloves, but as he dug into the thing, his hairy arms are rubbing every other fucking piece. Yeah. Like he's going elbow deep into this thing. I was like, those tiny gloves are doing nothing. He's wearing child size rubber gloves. I was, <laughs> I was freaking out about the whole, like, let's do an autopsy thing. Like, like, I know in most movies you, you try to suspend belief and you try not to overanalyze it, but I was like, there's no way in hell that in this tiny research facility, which they never do they ever say what they're researching? Because they seem no. to have really Smoking great weed equipment, and drinking. Really yeah. great equipment yeah. and the perfect people for this. Like so yeah, and like, like a computer uh... that can suddenly analyze um alien blood samples and tell you what DNA is and stuff. And I'm like, what? What are they doing in Antarctica with all that? That's they're that's like, what they're doing research, now. Uh, we can research like, uh, since we didn't bring women. How long before like, we did the US, we all start doing each other? Did the government <laughs> send them there under false pretenses? How cold does it have to and be? And then, but really knowing that there wasn't a thing there the whole time. There, no, that's a good one. And it set them up. There's there's other things that, as I've watched it over the years, I didn't necessarily pay attention when I was eight or whatever and went and saw it but later on you know you start thinking about it so they're a research facility all right man cool you know you're down there axes uh dynamite sure got it you know you never know mm -hmm. yeah. Weapons, yeah i mean you know you never know what's going to happen i mean they were attacked by the norwegians why the fuck do they have flamethrowers what, what are you doing with flamethrowers um in antarctica i've already figured that out People, okay. mount, people mount driveways with flamethrowers. I guess, but they yeah. don't have a driveway. They keep every time they're making they a drive, a fucking they're using that bulldozer. Yeah, yeah they, right. they gotta mount. They gotta make roads with that. Yeah, you gotta. They're using it to heat up, like you know, equipment and stuff. Yeah, oh, you know, like, they need got... a whole pack of dogs. In I guess, man. Or dog sledding, you know. <laughs> <There's> dog sledding. <laughs> you yeah, know? you gotta have the dog sled. Team. Hey, Joe, are we getting off track of whatever? No, absolutely not. No, this is very, this is actually exactly the way I was hoping it would go, that it would just be a mishmash of like, why are there fucking like eight, why is there like six, seven, eight dogs there? And I, I mean, is anyone using a dog set? I don't know. What are they, like what are they researching? 80% of my notes are questions. Like, yeah, it's, I didn't uh, tell you. you know, how much on, weed on do you have to note. bring to Antarctica? On See, that now, that's the story. Plus the dogs would be able to sniff out the bodies. Like if somebody gets lost, they would help you find them, so. Oh, that's yeah, good. Man. That's good. Yeah, um, they, they, oh, they, that dude had to have a ton of weed because he, him and Keith David shared that joint that was, bro, that thing was like eight inches long and as big around as like a hot dog. Well, it was so. It was, it was, it was, well, it was, it was a cigar, all right. <laughs> but I mean, maybe they had just gotten there, you know, and the spring team was going to relieve them. So maybe. As Kurt Russell says, you know, the first goddamn week of winter. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah it was the very first week of winter. Yeah. So you guys maybe keep, they you just guys, got it. You guys keep bouncing around my notes. It's funny. Uh, I put, Adam's like, I can't keep up. <laughs> I put, you can get, you can booze or get high at an isolated work environment with no immediate repercussions. Which is well, that's, <laughs> that's what, you know, shipboard life used to be like, you know? Yeah. I mean, so. And then uh, I also wrote it down they have an excess amount of kerosene flares and wood planks for, yeah. for some reason. What are they making here? What yeah, are like, they uh, researching? As we find out, out yes. that um, like the 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 thing can only be can only be killed with fire, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, because it basically went into hibernation in the cold, so. They just well, so, to cremate the entire yes life. and no because they do say there is life left in the burned remains yeah he, he does say that at one point made it there's still like something there but they got um, they got those bodies were all gooey even after burning them. Yeah. Um, speaking like a, of like the a, uh, it's like a rare steak 
the outside is cooked, but the inside is still. Yeah. Speaking right. of the, uh, the kerosene, one of my hot takes was I've never I've never carried a lantern in my life. <laughs> You've never seen Chris in the woods with a lantern, you know, like like Leverett in the middle of the night waking up with his candle on a saucer with his hat on, you know, going to pee. And that was all that was left in that abandoned Norwegian base, right? Was That was it? That's all they had left? It wasn't abandoned. Uh, they were murdered. Well, they, they did have the lantern there. Down. Ooh, the guy that they find there and, like, the frozen blood icicle, yeah. I yeah. thought that was... That was fucking cool. An That's pretty cool. Like, a nice touch, like... How cold is this place? So cold that your blood freezes as it falls out of your body. Like, that's insane. That's, uh, Did you I mean, know that the first scene when they go into the Swedish base is actually their own base? Norwegian. Yep. No, no, I mean, they went to the Norwegian base to, like, look around. All that burned out remains. That was shot after, actually, the what they did to their own base at the mm. end of the movie, you know, when, like, <clears throat> it's all on fire and shit. Well, that makes it, sense. They just used the remains of... Yeah, they used the old set. Yeah. I thought that was kind Save of... Save money. Oh. Yeah. I'll tell yeah. you something else. Um, they're, uh, they have a pretty lax armory situation there. Yeah. Um, you know, well, it's not just that. I mean, Kurt Russell, he just pops up with a shotgun whenever he needs it. Wilford oh, Brimley's yeah. got a gun in his desk drawer nobody knows about. The Paul rifles Wilson are behind, has the like, great a... Glass. I mean, I like wanna, behind a glass door that I want to bring this up, <laughs> but that uh, you're right. It, it's for being in Antarctica and then the extreme fucking weather situations you're going to be in. A lot of fucking plate glass in this place. <laughs> um, that oh, fucking yeah. master at arms just knocks the window out to shoot at the Norwegians, you know. And it's <laughs> like, hey, this you need so thicker windows crazy. and like that's going to be at least double pane glass. You're not They're surviving. Not like the winds are at 48 knots and this storm is here. And hey. I'm just like, this place is going to blow over. Like, he, had, he had been to surf alpha, man. He was making use of cover and concealment. You know, you're not going to I live it. in San Diego, California. I get calls every week to update my windows <laughs> to get ready for the winter months. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm all right. I want to bring it back to the master of arms and, uh, speaking on it, you know, as much as I hate revolvers, Herschel, I yes, admit that uh, we need to bring back bullet bandoliers. Oh, you like his his oh, belt? Fuck yeah, <laughs> it's always a cool look. If nothing else, let's bring <laughs> let's modern day fashion accessory. I'm I'm with it. Now, in order to kind of rein this into some sort of rough actual uh, uh, format here, <laughs> Good job, Joe. if you're listening to this, you're like, I have no idea what's happening in this movie at all. Well, you really should. It came out in '82. This is not this should not be new. Yeah, there's no spoiler <laughs> alerts. Yeah, you know our fans. They uh, the, maybe maybe they've come to expect this. That we're just going to be everywhere <laughs> with it. Uh, <laughs> all all tens of them. Um, <clears throat> season three. You know the rules change. Oh, yeah. that's a good point. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so like uh, we got. <laughs> The, the, the crew here, I guess, is what we might call them. The crew. Yeah. Uh, no the, science. The crew, yeah, yeah, the crew here, as they're starting to pick up, like, these tiny clues, like, that or not tiny clues at all. I mean, there's a fucking dog <laughs> that gets, that, that sucks up, like, seven other dogs. And, you know, I mean, they're like, what the, f you know, this is actually going completely crazy. And they're piecing together uh, what exactly is going on. Uh it starts to really uh, eat away at the guys and uh, the distrust gets super heavy uh, to the point that, I mean, like, you know, nobody, every, everybody goes in teams and then nobody wants to be on the same team as other people that they're, everyone has like their own kind of like, I think this, or I think that this person was in this room too long. Yeah. It's, it's all, it's all this, this, this they're, they're they're all they no, nobody trusts anybody at this point. Um, well, that's what he know. says, doesn't he? Yep. What's that? Yeah. Mac Ready. They said it in the he tape. Does. Right? Yeah, he does. I can't oh yeah. Mac Ready. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Um, so and, and uh, um, so as this like you know distrust stuff happens, um, McCready 
loses his shirt or what, or doesn't even lose his shirt. Someone steals his shirt. Yeah. And rips it up because they figured out that if, if they find it, that the alien can't replicate uh, clothes, right? Is that what it was? Like, it, so it rips out of the clothes. You said it rips through you. We think it rips through your yeah. clothes when it takes you over. Yeah. yeah. So you got that going on. And uh, they find McCready, which is uh, uh, Kurt Russell's character. He wears a cowboy hat in the Antarctic and a sick ass cowboy hat, too. Why would you not? Um, you know, um, as this as this part of the story starts coming out where they're like where everybody's, you know, side eyeing everybody else. This is when the movie, I think, is at its like best parts. Yeah. You know, they, th- th- that is ultimately like even without the alien aspect of this thing, you know, I mean, it's the the overall like human like distrust of everyone else. That makes it so much better. Like, cause I like I like being able to put myself in the situation where it's like, would I or wouldn't I? Mm-hmm. You know, like with like the same thing with like Train to Busan. You know, where it's like everybody shits on that guy for being like, nope, I'm not opening these fucking doors. Yeah. You know, and then you're like, yeah, dude, open the doors. You're like, wait a second, if this is me, I would definitely not open. You know, I would definitely not do any of some of this Joe, stuff. Uh, Joe, just to jump in, the um, in this situation. This all this distrust. You don't know who's an alien, who's not. I'm committing suicide. <laughs> yeah. I'm in Antarctica. I'm already suicidal if I'm there. Um, but when this shit happens, I'm like, there's no way we're getting out of this shit. We just saw this fucking alien with Charles Houlihan's head on it. <laughs> you know, uh, we're not getting out of this alive. I might as well just go ahead and end it. I'd say, give me one of those belt, one of those bullets off your bandolier. <laughs> Can I just say that for as much as they know what's going on, they know that this thing is assimilating and copying these people. They are not quick to adopt a two or three person liberty no. buddy. No, system. not at all. Why they, do they keep splitting up so much? Exactly, it's right? The yeah. they, they split it's the Scooby Doo method. They just just stay together the entire time, and eventually they'll figure it out. Well, it's, oh, I want to ask. Do you guys think that we could have figured out that it's assimilating and all this shit? Like no. us as a group? <laughs> Jim, I mean, you two, probably not. Time. You know, <laughs> 2024, we got we got a 50-50 chance. At I least. think I think I think Joe's a, a thing. Why? Because he doesn't drink milk out of a plastic cup. Right. <laughs> no, 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 that's his joke. <laughs> He's just a weirdo. Yeah. He's just a, yeah. Uh yeah, there's the 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 whole like distrust that that's what really I think makes this movie so much better. I, has anyone read the book? No. No. no has anybody seen movie. the original? Absolutely. Has not. anyone read a book? Yes. No. I asked how long. Oh no. Um, you know, in the blood locker, it's like somebody got into all the high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> oh yeah, it that looked person's... like uh, like strawberry syrup all over the place. I was like, this is great. Uh, why they... would they get in the blood locker? I didn't get the because they were going to do the test, the serum test. Because mm-hmm. then they could compare the blood sample from their healthy so, blood to their. So that doctor we think blood. is the alien. Well, but I want to say this: sowing the uh, seeds of his distrust. Here. Yeah, the um, the defibrillator scene is probably one of the most iconic scenes in movie I... history. It's okay. great to me yeah, he was not when that crazy. happened, like the fucking abdomen, abdominal cavity opened up, turned into a big, uh, like a Venus fly trap mouth and <laughs> bit those arms off. I love that. It I, just, I was like, wow, this is great. And like I said, I appreciate was, a lot more now than when I was I a had kid. the same reaction as McReady when that head turned into a weird spider thing. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I said out loud, hmm. what the fuck is happening? And instantly he said, you gotta be kidding me. And I was like, exactly, bro. I get you. On that note, there's too much hesitation when they need to use a flamethrower. Like, yeah. just give me the cool. flamethrower. Yeah. They'd be like, hey, and I'll be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, now I'm not lighting the other flamethrowers. With- <laughs> did you say did- light them on fire? Because I already did. Yeah, they, they'd be like, we should have killed ourselves like Chris did. <laughs> just over on that couch that they tied everybody to, just laying there dead. Uh, just... The guy, the guy that had the glasses, like he was almost like McCready's, like confidant at one point in time. Fuchs, Fuchs. Is that, yeah, Fuchs. 
how, did, how, did, he was dead for sure. Yes. But did he kill himself or did the thing, the thing wouldn't have killed him. The thing would have assimilated him. Well, their, their oh, theory yeah. was that he, maybe he burned himself before yeah, yeah. it could get to him. Uh, yeah. yeah, he was like face he, to face with he it. He was like, well, fuck it. As, yeah. As much money as they had, they did have to cut things. He's like, well, he goes, like, using one little bottle of kerosene is not going to kill our supply. I'll just go ahead and kill myself with it. Okay, so. <laughs> I want to go back to. Oh, sorry, you're not done. Oh, oh no. There was, I was just, the, I, was, I was watching today. I was like. So he killed him. I mean, I get, yeah, I guess he, he would have had to have killed himself. The thing, but is, I thought it was weird that it's kind of glossed over that. Yeah, because the, the thing is about survival, not it wouldn't kill itself. Mm. And yeah, so they know he was human, but that makes it sadder. <laughs> I just want to go back to you said uh, McCready and uh, Fuchs were confidants, and I <laughs> had to write this note in my notebook. Uh, they totally fuck in the snowplow. Like, that is... <laughs> you they broke use that, that Yeah. <laughs> People fuck in there, and this is an expedition of all men, so, like... That's who. That's how they knew where to go. We'll, yeah. we'll go to the secret fucking spot. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay. It's like the sex closet. Yep. Thanks, thanks for the closet. F-track, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If so I dirty McCready that's why he was voice. all like, I just want to go back to my shack and get drunk. I don't want to do this. And he's like, No, listen, it's about a notebook. <laughs> if I may, yes, for the 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 couple that uh, hadn't seen it, or at least hadn't seen it in a long time, I think this movie has a legit, really good jump scare when they're doing the blood test because you you don't expect it. And yeah. I mean, when you know it's coming, you're like, Fine, whatever. But he's talking over it. You're not really paying attention. And then it just shrieks and it's out. I, I was just curious on the newbies if you felt the same. Yeah, I think I, Adam, I jumped definitely, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I jumped. I jumped today when I saw it again, <laughs> knowing it was coming. Like, it's a good spot. It's surprising. It's Andy, impressive. you a jumper? Impressive. I didn't because, like, you know, I'm trying to. I'm cramped through this thing like <laughs> you know i need to like really sit down and watch i get home i, I get up. dinner started I do my cardio watching this yeah. thing you know i'm like basically deployment watching this thing where you know it's on in the shop i have to go uh, change some tapes you know i come mm-hmm. back you know i miss like I sunk a minute in my here chair. or there it didn't run it back when attention. i need to but and uh now i put my phone away and everything i was like nope just sitting here with a pencil and a paper and nothing else. Otherwise, I will get distracted and not give it my attention. Hey, that's got that's that that scene is the best scene of the movie, right? Yeah, well, yeah, it's definitely the. the well, I think that, and moment. yeah, it well, what it leads up to, yeah, for sure. Well, I really enjoyed the the scene where the doctor is like losing his mind and locked himself in the <laughs> office, and then like. McCready gets the other guy to go around the other side to distract him, and then they just charge in there with a door. And, and I, I thought that yeah. was pretty fun. I did write a note on that, Sabrina. Fucking Wilford Brimley and his old man strength threw <laughs> McCready, threw McCready and the table across the room. Yeah, I mean, and I was like, now up. this oh, is forty-eight-year-old Wilford Brimley. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but I, I think. He's already been taken over at that point, right? I mean, when no. else would he have been gotten? I don't know. No, he wasn't taken over. Because no. he made the noose in the... Sure, but immediate, yeah. he, he's yeah. out there all by himself, and he's making the oh, ship underneath. Isolated. He had like a I sane thought. Show, he made that he noose. trying to trick them to come back in. No, I don't think that's how the thing works, though. I think he got infected post-noose. I think it was yeah. before Noose because Noose, he was using that as a, like, obviously, I'll kill myself if I don't, and there, the thing wants to live. So. He just wants to get back inside, man. Yeah, I just want to get back inside. Mm-hmm. I am. It's all better now. Is this you know, what and is, uh, that, 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 see, this is what makes this movie so good, yeah. is the fact that even after, you know, Chris and Herschel's, you know, combined 15,000 times of seeing this, <laughs> They still don't know shit. 
<laughs> well, that's the way he called it. Well, that, so this is why it was they panned. They weren't expecting you to say that, and you could tell by the looks on their face. It was like, oh. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, like, this is mean, why it was you... panned, because they don't, nobody knows anything that happened. They, and, and John Carpenter left it like, this is why people hated it. But John yeah. Carpenter said, this is his favorite movie. Yeah. This is yeah. what makes the he movie said, good. at the end, you still don't know who is the thing. You don't know who's infected. It's Keith David and, um, you know, hell, uh, Usher got killed at the beginning, right? When did yeah. Usher get killed? Middle of the movie. Um, I didn't know he was in the movie till he skated in. I was like, oh, Usher <laughs> again. But it's, uh, you know, at the end when it's just McCready and, uh, was it Clark? What was his uh, Child. Keith David's name? Childs. Childs. Um, um, Still, they didn't know if either one of them was was infected, and the movie ends. Yeah, and he wanted to leave it that way. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. How cool is Keith? David? But that's what makes the movie good. Like it's like gory, jumpy scares, like meh acting, whatever. Like the thing about this movie that is good is that it leaves an impression on you, and you think about it. Like it makes you think, whether it's about like. Like, how do you trust people or aliens or, like, it's deeper than just this scare for the sake of scare and gore for the sake of gore, which are movies that I don't like. So that's why this is a good movie. Who else Let's thought it was weird for Wilford yeah. yeah. Brimley to not have his mustache? <laughs> oh, that was my dude, first thing. I was like, I was like. That's weird. I can't trust him without a mustache. That's how you know he's the, the thing, you know, right out the <laughs> gate. It turns out you could not trust him. I realized that this was his first alien movie. He appeared in two more in the in the eighties. Yep. So he's like, I already know how to deal with these fuckers. <laughs> but you know, cocoon uh, and what else? Cocoon two. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> electric <laughs> boogaloo. Yeah. Yeah. Some things you try to forget. Oh, uh, let's just uh, real quick, just, you know, kind of just fanboy over Keith David. Right. Anything he's in, I'll watch. Anything he's in, I'll watch, and I have a good time doing it. Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, it's oh, um, uh, his voice, his mannerisms, the way he delivers. Um, it makes me want to watch Men at Work again, because <laughs> one of his greatest roles is in Men at Work, but uh, Platoon's great, you know? I think he plays the same character in Platoon. So, so. Pretty close. I think he was a little more educated in this one, but he's this the was his first Rick and Morty major movie. role. Yeah. What's that? I, I didn't catch it. What was that? Oh, he's the president in Rick and Morty. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But it, hey, it, and some people, they, they show their cards early, man. This was like his first major movie, and look how good he turned out to be. Hey, he, uh, I don't know any of the movie season. They survived to the end. <laughs> he kind of looks like a like a young Mackay Piper in this movie. Oh, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Well, was, I, I enjoy it. I thought and he, he does play a pretty uh pretty good tough guy, you know, yeah. kind of role. You know, this you know. I think when you're when you're watching this movie, you're probably like Ooh, McCready's a badass. McCready is a badass. Don't get me wrong. And, but, you know, Childs is a badass, too. And he's a straight shooter, too, which is nice. Like, he's not, like, really that much. He's not really, like, flying off the handle getting crazy. He's just, like, we're going to handle business. Like, let's fucking do it. Yeah. I mean, he's making decisions. Hey. Yeah. Start boarding the place up, man. Fuck him. I mean, you yeah. know, what we got to do? He's Who's... the hot-tempered one. That's why he can't be in charge, though. Well, like... that's true. Like who if if they split off into camps, whose camp are you? Are you on Childs or McCready? Team McCready or Team Childs? Well, I think I'll be McCready because I mean <laughs> you are McCready. Well, there's that, <laughs> but I mean, I'd say fun. that McCready because he could fly we, a helicopter. Yeah, exactly. If we can fix it, he's the one that's going to be able to fly it. Nothing against Childs. And McCready's definitely not afraid to just kill somebody instantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, shit, he told Childs, I'll kill you right. You know, I'll kill you then. And yeah. obviously, he would have, you know? <clears throat> yeah, because he blew a hole in uh, Clark. Clark. Big guy's head. Yeah, Clark. Yeah. yeah. 
without hesitation. Yeah. <laughs> Another revolver kill. I just want to point out there. Adam. <laughs> right. Draw. Red, right red. on his ass. We're watching um, John Wick, so I can find out how the <laughs> it's sick kills. Uh, uh, let's see here, man. Let's see, let's yeah, that see. mistrust led to him murdering Clark. Well, that and the fact that Clark was coming after yeah, him. Yeah, right. Clark. That was more self defense. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's. You have to test of Clark's blood too, and the uh, you know, child's tell you you're, you're a murderer. He yeah. doesn't even. He doesn't even think about it twice. Give me the next blood. <laughs> Whatever. Let's just let's keep moving on. You know. He's like, well, can't do anything about it now. No. What am I gonna do? Yeah, you, you know, just gotta keep on heating up this copper wire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just uh, they never are. thought of uh, never thought of Snake Plissken doing an Escape from Antarctica movie. This is perfect. It led right into it. <laughs> or right. Yeah. I mean, his next movie, basically. Yeah. Right after Escape. I thought it was crazy in that when they're all tied up and they're all just like this monster is doing <laughs> bananas shit in the corner and just geeking out and transforming in front of them. And yeah. like, these guys are just on this couch <laughs> together, just <laughs> bouncing Little around. Help. Like, untie, um, and... Untie us. and they're like, no, we won't untie it. I'm like, well, burn the thing. Like, like there was I do want to say this chaotic I... moment of nothing. The BS of them being tied up. They were tied up to the fucking couch cushions. They could have stood up at any time. Those couch cushions are coming with them. They're slipping out of those ropes. Those that's, like I mean, that's true, ones, but those they're... Those leather ones that are, like, bolted onto the metal frames and stuff. No. They were Their feet and they hands. Were jumping around. Your feet and hands were tied, too, so I'm pretty they sure... They tied them real good. I don't know. They, you know, he'd have turned them into s'mores. He's a double start. bowling knot. It was hilarious, so you could, like, focus on that ridiculousness rather than stare at the grossness if you really wanted to like i said <laughs> I, i've already like untie me at that uh, point i've already been dead 20 minutes in that movie <laughs> by your own hand apparently by my own frozen hand. outside i'd have just had a yeah. stroke uh I, I did want to read this i caught this uh uh john carpenter 2008 uh he was mm -hmm. asked about the uh reception of the thing mm-hmm he said, I take failure, every failure hard. The one I took the hardest was the thing. My career would have been different if that had been a, if that had been a big hit. The movie was hated, even by science fiction fans. They thought I had betrayed some kind of trust, and the piling on was insane. Even the movie, the <clears throat> even the original movie, original movie director, Christian Nibby, 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 was dissing me. <laughs> Damn. <clears throat> yeah, poor John I'll, Carpenter. I'll say this. Whenever I see bad reviews, I know I need to watch that movie because it's probably going to be good. Mm -hmm. Depending, depending on the movie. Unless it's Josie and the Pussycats and you can probably Madam Web. Well. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, the there's Argyle. no interest there. But if you tell me the Naked Gun sucked, I'm just like, oh, I'm watching it. Yeah. Of course, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, thumbs down. Oh, let me see why. It's, uh... I saw Four Feathers in the theater. It was terrible. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, with that being said about uh, you know how he how John Carpenter felt about the movie, he's made a pretty solid career. I mean, yeah. he, I think he's I think he's pretty awesome at what he does. I mean, he has. I know you're a Snake Plissken guy, uh, Herschel. Sure. I, I, what's what's John Carpenter yeah. got? So, um, it's funny because he's a he was a film school guy um, at UCLA, I do believe. Um, and when he got out of film school, he wanted to make Westerns. Turns mm -hmm. out they were not making Westerns anymore. So if you think about a lot of the movies that he's made and say, well, he's making a modern Western, it applies to quite a few of them. Uh, Assault on Precinct 13, uh, this to a certain extent, uh, freaking Escape from New York. I mean... They're basically westerns. He Vampires. did Christine the next year. Like this is 1982, and Christine is 1983. Yep. Yep. Have you ever seen uh, <clears throat> Vampires? Big Trouble Little Vampires. I saw that one. I, I like that vampire movie. <laughs> it's well, it's a hell of a lot better than the the sequel with John Bon Jovi. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's legit. I mean, it was a different vampire movie. It wasn't the same old shtick. I mean. 
it was something different, you know. And James, James Woods, Woods like yeah, as 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 crazy as batshit crazy as he is, he's a good actor, you know. Um, but I did just want to throw the tie in uh, really quick. So, have you seen Halloween, the original Halloween? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course, everybody's seen it. That's the only one I've seen. So, in the original Halloween, uh, on the television is the original The Thing. Carpenter, big big fan of the movie. Uh, I mean, you know, it came out in 51, so it was one of the things he grew up with. So, fast forward, he gets to make his version of The Thing. Granted, it didn't turn out immediately uh, in his favor, but it found its audience come to just a couple years ago and they redid or shouldn't say redid but a new halloween trilogy and halloween ends the babysitters are watching john carpenter's the thing so you know it, it kind of comes full circle <laughs> little little things you know he gets he gets his shout outs where he can just what about the uh, mary elizabeth winstead thing yeah it's it's a prequel that's the norwegian camp it is I didn't think it was. It did. I don't know. It didn't. It didn't resonate with me quite like this one did. No, it's no. I, mean, the, I remember the first time I watched this movie, and I was like, when it ended, you know, because it just ends on like, I guess at the at when you're at the height of like, what's gonna how's you know what's gonna happen? You got two guys left, McCready and Childs. One of them could be an alien. One of them, or. Or, or they both could be. McCready's a human. Might not be. We know that, right? I What's think that? Game recognizes game at that point. You know, and <laughs> yeah, and you, I, I, I mean, you know, and then afterwards, you know, all the the, the, the folks I was watching with us, you know, we grilled each other on for hours, you know, trying to figure it out for days. I still talk about it to some some of the people that I've seen that with, you know, like what did happen. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I think the uh, point wasn't like which one of them is the alien. The point was we've decided we've made this decision together. Like this is where it ends, you know. Yeah, the <laughs> infectious level is too much that you know you can't. You technically can't really. But like risk we can it. go back and forth like this all day, or we can just assume that one of us might be the thing, and we're going to sleep in the free in the frozen tundra forever until the yeah. next time this shit happens and one of us is human and I'm just the other one's just going to die but either way both those dudes are dead true i i do take a little issue with their final plan there to just wait it out well no 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 that has them blowing the the camp up yeah so they make this decision you know hey we're going to do this blah 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 Crash through with the bulldozer, knock holes in the tank, start throwing Molotovs, blowing the place apart. Get to the very last room, which is the generator room. And then McCready asks, is there any way we can fix the generator? Mm -hmm. A little late for that now, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, you've done blown the entire place to shit. I mean, what Or any place that had some parts and supplies and tools. I, I mean, I guess, man. I don't know. Right. There's no... I mean, did they have, like plate glass somewhere that they could replace the windows they broke or, earlier in case things worked out you they know could repair anything with kerosene flares and yeah. wooden planks and dog fur and dog yeah. fur <laughs> oh goodness gracious bad was that sweet at throwing a grenade or shooting yeah yeah like shooting he, like, threw, he threw the grenade behind him yeah. Like, I, I expected to hear Yakety Sax start playing. Like, hey, uh, you never see the Swedes and Norwegians doing great in uh, the Summer Olympics, okay? Well, they're more, they're more Winter Olympic guys, so nobody's throwing grenades. Apparently not. You would not. think they'd be able to shoot with a scope, you know? It's like they're doing that, was it, uh, decathlon biathlon. stuff, skiing, cross-country skiing, and then shooting. Yeah, it's yeah. a biathlon. You they can't, just spent so much time flying around at the beginning of the movie shooting after this dog it was very i felt like it went on for too long i thought it was a wolf at first like a 1982 <laughs> wolf i thought maybe movie. it was just like oh this old yeah. movie here like they didn't have a budget to get a dog that looks like an actual wolf so they just got a husky mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're pretending yeah. it's a wolf 
exactly exactly but, the boy, kind of the way but it did seem it. bigger like when it first walked into the dog pen like it seemed if, like it was a little bit bigger like it was either more wolf or whatever than uh, um, malamute i say it, it looked uh, like john snow's fucking wolf <laughs> yeah the guy that got shot he was getting stitches and the dog goes ah oh, it's only four stitches like they i said what what counts as a stitch then because it went all the way across his leg i was like <laughs> four it's like what are we counting here yeah no, I was thinking they should have had like PETA out there with signs, you know, quit shooting at the dog. Because he wasn't. Happy. How much? How many rounds did he have in that gun? Right. I mean, I think he. I think he had about a thirty rounder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that Start. was a Schwarzenegger gun there. <laughs> Never ran out of bullets. I'm wondering about his thought process too. I mean, they sat down. He's at a camp where there's other people. They're all coming out to see what's going on, and he's just going to chuck a grenade, I guess. Uh, had he not thrown it behind him? Is was he just, just like, fuck it, I'm killing all these American guys too? They could I mean, be aliens to him. I they guess. seen some weird shit. Is yeah. Kurt Russell like the everyman's Arnold Schwarzenegger? Because everybody knows they can't be Arnold Schwarzenegger, but everybody thinks they might be able to be Kurt Russell. He's the comedy action star. <laughs> He's the tango and cash, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can keep saying things like that, but that's that's not really answering the question. Yeah, everybody can be Kurt Russell, except, you know, we all don't get Goldie Hawn. Like he's always trying to play a character like, Ugh, I'm not that cool. I just so happen to have the good good timing, basically. <laughs> I'm lucky. <laughs> like in a lot of his movies. Well, I, I think he's just likable. He's a likable guy. Yeah. Um He's yeah. somebody you can hang out with. He doesn't seem pretentious, or maybe he is. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, um, he's yeah, not going to get a Lifetime Achievement Award at the, this year's Academy Awards. but it, He should. But he I mean, he should have gotten, gotten, he should have gotten it 20 years ago. Yeah, he yeah. should have. He's but, managed uh, to have like a career for, what, 50 years now? Just think about it. Uh, right. I mean, I just watched Overboard again the other day, and I think it's hilarious. But yeah. then... You know, he gets with Tarantino and does those little bit parts in Tarantino. And they're, they're amazing parts that he does in those movies. Did you guys see him in the Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> He's yeah. all right. I mean, did you see him in Miracle? I did like him as a villain. <laughs> it was great to see him as a villain. See him in Fast 9 or 8? Whichever I saw, one he was I gave up in a couple of them. A long time ago, buddy. Mr. Yeah. Nobody or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. I identify with the foot fetish guy in uh, Death Proof. Great. Do you have a foot fetish? <laughs> the only way he'd get his goo off. That diabolical <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, if Keith David would have went the Samuel L. Jackson route, you know, Samuel L. Jackson digs in with the motherfucker, um, Keith David does a really good son of a bitch in his yeah. movies. <laughs> he does. If he could have went that route. That would have been he cool. Does. Mm, he does. I wouldn't. Has Keith David and David Keith done a movie together, Herschel? Mm-hmm. Not that I can recall, but it would be pretty cool. Yeah, there was a time there where Keith, David Keith, died in twenty-eight of his thirty movies. Yeah, I think the first time I saw him die was Officer and a Gentleman, which came out yeah. in eighty-two. So, uh, don't want to get those two mixed up. Uh, you know, the skin Herschel, thing probably does that. Yeah. Did you uh, say last time we got together that, uh, that this movie has one of your favorite deaths in it? It does. And that's uh, that's the defibrillator. Okay. Uh, okay. Because it's, you know, the movie's already done things that you're like, what the hell? I don't know. I don't even know what to expect. And they they do a really good job of you don't know who's what. But I guess you're thinking, I mean, the thing is not going to have a heart attack, so this guy's probably not the thing. And then his chest just opens up. Um, but what I think is pretty cool about that scene, it's and you don't know it even when you're looking at it, they got an amputee to do that part. So he had, you know, jello-type arms or whatever that they could rip off, and they just did a little bit face makeup to make him look like the other actor. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Wow! Different, you know. Hey, you know, little little things, physical effects, before computers, that's really cool. The world before AI. They're like, we need an armless dude. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, who knew there was a there was a acting school for amputees, but uh, there they are. But yeah, that is what it's, about, it's a about great the guy scene. that got his head bitten off. Mm. Did they have a? Did they did they hire someone without a head? I'm well, just... yeah, I mean, he wasn't like I said, he was in dungarees. He was probably a navy sailor, yeah. probably a radio man from back in the day. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, maybe. Uh... Anybody have anything else, like any other notes that they, they wanted to bring up and ask a question about, or maybe grill Herschel or Chris on uh, the complexities? I mean, what <laughs> were the complex? What were the no. like? My hot take was uh, everybody's afraid. Well, what, what were the complaints the about the movie, like early on, like back when it came out? Like, was it just the gore level or whatever or did like i mean it's not like it's a um, concept well kind of thing like thing is, I, I was just looking at it earlier and it's right here yeah. the pro the plot was criticized as boring and undermined by the special effects the los angeles times said that the thing was i don't even know what that word is bereft bereft despairing and nihilistic and lacking in feeling meaning the characters deaths did not matter uh Sloppy continuity, lacked pacing, and was devoid of warmth or humanity. Uh, <laughs> Newsweek felt the film confused the use California of... would say something like that. Newsweek felt the film confused the use of effects with creative suspense and then lacked drama by sacrificing everything at the altar of gore. I mean, like, I mean, if you went, if you go to the Wikipedia page and look at uh, reception, I mean, it's. Yeah several scrolls I'm doing of just people <laughs> shitting on this movie. Hmm. Well, I mean, everybody any, like, there were some good points to this movie. Well, let's get to They're the... Uh, wrong about they called it a surprising failure. failure. Uh, oh, they, uh, that uh, Mr. Nighy, he yeah. said, uh, if you want blood, go to the slaughterhouse. All in all, it's a terrific commercial for J&B Scotch. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> So I mean, like everybody just crapped all over this guy. Poor, like I thought poor it John was, Carpenter. It was a cool depiction. Like I hadn't seen that yet. I hadn't seen something like so, the weird carcasses that were left behind and stuff. Like I haven't seen it in any other movie. So it wasn't the same old, same old gore. And it wasn't like you were seeing things being. I guess there was some tearing and stuff. I don't know. It wasn't. I mean, you know, keep in mind that, you know, you got, like, E.T. came out in 1982, they're like, I love aliens. And they're like, oh, my <laughs> God, I do not like aliens. I forgot. Maybe that they was the not, problem. Oh. Like, the culture was all about popularizing that. Now, McCready would have, like, I don't know, maybe or somehow, e. maybe. you know, gotten up on a bicycle and rode with the thing in the basket. People would have seen the humanity <laughs> and, the, and the thing. The, the, he rode the basket the on a point, helicopter. Right? You to, that this thing is not human, like yeah. it's without humanity. No, they, 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 they were not kind. No, I think I, uh, I don't think any of these critics ever spent a six month deployment on a navy ship. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's normally not the progression of. I want to know why why these aliens couldn't uh, become like fish. And then swim up to South America there, and then move on to that mainland, and then become like a jaguar in the Amazon forest at some point, and you know have taken over the world in these hundred thousand years. Well, thank God that they landed on Antarctica. Right, you crash land and freeze, kind of prevented that whole. Until yeah. the Norwegians they just went to blew the next them up. Entire life form, like they can't. Those crazy dogs Swedes. A thousand miles out into where they their civilization, but these humans with their advanced technology, that seems like an option. But you know, Blair with his fancy computer from '82, it said twenty-seven thousand hours after first contact, whole population of the world yeah. infected, or whatever mm. you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, crazy. Yeah. Mm. I don't. How long is twenty-seven thousand hours? Three years. Three years, holy! It's a good while. I feel like you might have a shot at figuring out something. Hmm. Nuclear war. That's all. Three on. years. That's some pretty quick math, math, there, man. I did it during the movie. Yeah, no, no. Oh, well, wow. okay. Yeah. I I thought that might be what you. I saw him start scribbling. And also, I thought um, going back to that first alien death scene and everything with the dogs and all that. And the way it like 
split open and whatever else is like kind of reminds me of some of like the first times we see the demigorgons and uh stranger things so i figured that was like a homage to the thing a little bit possibly yeah. it did look like a demigorgon homage homage opens up like a fucking flower or something yeah flower. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it, said something gross in the movie it inspired a lot, but I mean it's it's hard to go back forty years because at the time nobody had seen this yeah uh, this kind of thing yeah yeah nobody and I have seen. that nice tight like cell, sandbox of a movie set so to speak and everything else you aren't getting a lot of that and it, it, that first the first dog thing I mean you know there's some things you don't do in movies I guess you don't hurt animals. And you don't hurt kids. So the first kind of gross out scene is a dog getting ripped apart. Yeah. And I think after that, you know, maybe that's where your critics checked out. They're like, no, Probably. this is garbage. This is crap. This is shock for the sake of shock. So, uh, you know, but they proved them wrong over the course of time. Because yeah. here we are 40 years later talking about it. Mm-hmm. And how amazing it is. Well, there's some movies that are 40 years later that we talked about that... It, it hasn't worked out for them. So. That's true. That's true. I was born in 1982. You were born in 82? I was born in 1982. Dang. November of 82, to be exact. Established. But not in Antarctica. No, 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 no. no. Spring. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spring Antarctica. It looks a lot different. A whole lot different. In case you're curious. Not even the same. trees haven't started blooming yet. Um, I guess uh, we can uh, maybe get into some of our uh, what you call it, uh, EMI stuff. All right. All right. So uh, I I kind of just threw it together. I'm, I'm not I'm not real proud of this EMI, folks. Uh, I went with uh, let's start with uh, cruise book quotes. Dang it. This wasn't, and I actually had a hard time with this, even though I chose the fucking EMI, because it just, <laughs> I, it, there's just not a lot of, I, I don't know, I try to like maybe like think of like what would a sailor say, uh, but like, let's start it off. Um, and if you didn't do it, we're just going to hit you with a, you know, the shame chant. But uh, Chris, what do you got for us, bud? <laughs> well, I have an easy one at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Fuck you too. <laughs> That's what I figured somebody would have. Uh, <laughs> Snowbrina. Okay, I I was just reading through the dialogue of the movie instead of watching it so that I could focus on what was actually being said. And I have like two and a half pages of quotes. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pick with the first one that I starred. Uh, we still have nothing to go on. <laughs> Pretty okay. much three... Every divo, every department head. So that's yeah, good. Yeah. That's, a, that's not bad. That's good. That's a good one. Maybe Perfect. applicable for sure. Uh, Andy, what do you got for us? I went with uh, Blair's. I'm all better now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding uh, out to see if somebody's going to say what I wrote. What was is that? Over Herschel, what, what do you? Yeah, what you got for us? I, I just I think it would be good to be under my picture in the cruise book, and that's uh, which one of you disrespectful men been throwing his dirty drawers in the kitchen laundry, or excuse me, kitchen right. trash? Mm. And uh, Adam, what do you got? Uh, this is at quarters. I know I'm human, and if you were all these things, you'd just attack me right now. So some of you are still human. <laughs> And I just went with uh, maybe we are maybe we're in we're Norway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was uh, I was thinking somebody would write down that one, like put it as uh, the ship is an organism; it assimilates all uh, any <laughs> life form it comes in contact with. <laughs> I was trying to guess what uh, I guessed what Adam would pick, and it that was a uh, I know. I adapted it to I instead of it. I know it's got a no way. I know I've got no way out of here. I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> I was like, I was really thinking Adam would 
find that one. I have a I have a HT in female birthing quote. Uh -oh. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know what the hell's in there, but it's weird and pissed off, whatever whatever it is. <laughs> oh, uh, right. And then the, uh, the uh, we did a top five here for the EMI of... Uh... Oh, we can't learn anything from this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> top five uh, aliens. Oh, and yeah. to be honest with you, I don't care if you use TV or movies. Too late. Literally. So if you were had a little, if you had a little hang up about that, feel free mm -hmm. to toss in your favorite uh, small screen aliens, and we are gonna start this one off with and Andy. Oh, All right. <laughs> the suspense. Sweet. All right. Um, yeah. So I'll just five to one it. Uh, number five. The robots from batteries not included. Nice aliens. Number four, uh, my favorite Martian, which there was a movie, but since you allow the small screen, I'd rather go for the, uh, you know, classic TV uh, black and white, you know, Great TV well. show. Mr. Han, huh? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, then I got to mix it up, go with the classic, the xenomorph. Hmm. Alien from Aliens franchise. Uh, I go with uh, Mac Whiplock and Zebo from Earth Girls Are Easy. <laughs> and then uh, what is that? Mac Whiplock and and Zebu. Yeah. Which is Jim Carrey, Jeff Goldblum, and uh, Damon Wayans. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, of course Predator number one. Yeah. Well, a very important time in comedic history there. Damon Wayans met Jim Carrey for the first time, and then his brother comes up with TV and shows, says, I have the perfect guy for this show. Mm. And then Jim Carrey's stardom was born, you know? Mm. All from Earth Girls Are Easy. <laughs> All right, next up, we are going to go with <clears throat> Chris. All right. Let's see, number five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got six, seven, eight. Um, we'll pick five. Kevin. Uh, Kevin from The History of Future Folk. Okay. We should watch that movie at some point. He's an assassin. Um, number four is uh, The Coneheads. <laughs> Great Classic. aliens. Good one. I guess that one. And number three is Superman. Oh, Cal L. Yep. Oh. Uh, number two are the killer clowns from outer space. And number one is the predator. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. Uh, let's go with uh, Sabrina. Okay. So I'm going to start with. The heptapods from Arrival. Thought they were cool. Their weird memory language thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then from my childhood, Ivan Ooze <laughs> from the Body Morphin Power Rangers movie. It left a mark in my head, so I figured it was worth bringing up. Um, clearly an <laughs> important weird. alien to young Sabrina. Sure. Um, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> then um the worms from men in black the heckling mm -hmm. worms hey, i love those guys oh did, get out of here and everything yeah, mm -hmm. yeah um then i go to the uh the vogons from the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy like the really bureaucratic dudes that yep. have really bad poetry <laughs> and then um Diva Plava Laguna from the Fifth Element. Well, mm -hmm. mostly because I could, I would just repeat that section of the movie and try to sing it as best as I could. <laughs> um, essential watching for me. <laughs> okay, all right. That's it. Those are my five. And what you got, dude? Um, dang, I didn't think about Monty Morphin Power Rangers because Lord Zed is. There's a... so many. 
Lord Zed <laughs> is a superior design. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it fits in right into my theme of bipedal aliens. Okay. Uh, number five is, um, I actually went with General Zod from the Henry Cavill Superman. Yeah, Mark Shannon. Great. Um, number four, I went with the Arbiter from the Halo franchise. Mm. From the which franchise? Halo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, number three was a uh, Scorpion Knox from the, uh, the first Transformers movie. He looked cool in robot and Decepticon form. Yeah. Uh, number two, I went with Darth Maul. Uh, it's a, a, a lot of, like red and black on evil aliens is a cool design. That's why yeah, I like yeah. Lord <laughs> Zed as well. Yeah, yeah. And the then, color scheme matters a lot here. And but no, my number one was the Predator, specifically from the new Prey movie. I think that's like the coolest looking Predator design yeah, it's pretty cool. kind of, but those are my top five yeah that was the reason i picked them at number one because there's so many things that you can do since that movie prey i was like oh we can put this predator in fucking medieval times and shit yeah yeah let's do some movies like that but that yeah, fucking right. skull fucking face mask and he's all tall and jacked and yeah way cool design yeah <clears throat> uh and then i guess uh, Herschel, you are the only one left besides myself. As yourself. But uh, as is tradition, you go last, I guess. Um, I guess so. I, I, did, I feel weird about it now. It is kind of odd, isn't it? But it but makes sense. In any event, so so go that we can get to you. Uh, number five, uh, the Metaluna Mutant from this island Earth. You've probably never seen it, but you know you should Google image it. Why not? Hmm. Plastic alien. Yeah. Uh, the aliens from They Live. I don't remember what planet they're from, but yeah, I do enjoy them. Uh, the id monster from Forbidden Planet. Again, Google it, because I'm sure you don't have any idea what it looks like. Um, the Blair monster from The Thing. You know, it's hard to see. Hey, this is from the '90s, man. The plastic is uh, is is a little oranged, but that's the I'm monster. Like, where can I fit one on my shelf? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's McFarland toys from the '90s, uh, and mm. then my uh, my number one is going to be the uh, the alien from uh, the '79 movie. This is, this is my he's he's uh, he's seen better days, but uh, we'll fix it, get it good to go. Still have his little head shield and his his mouth opens. Oh, cool! So, you know, <laughs> let's see that but, juicy hog. You know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, that they made a toy marketed for kids yeah. from a rated R movie that no kid saw in 79. Mm. Is uh, that the original toy you had? Yeah. Yeah, that is. Um, yeah. It was like Robocop. Crazy, huh? Yeah. That's toy what... line came out. NECA, for... NECA Toys has a McCready figure that's fairly new. I've, I've, I've seen it. And, oh. you know, I, I have things like you have on display. It's just... I have a hard time spending money for more things I'm not going to open. <laughs> well, open that bitch there's, up. Well, I mean, there's that. But, Tell uh, Patrice to let you have your own room. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, that so that's, that's, for our home. <laughs> so, uh, that's my five. So over to you, Joe. All right, my five. And uh, I did do it in like a top five kind of fashion this time. I did. Um, these were aliens that impacted my life as I was getting older. Hmm. The brain bug. (laughs) That's from uh, Starship Troopers, in case you're curious. Yeah. I remember seeing that thing and being like, oh, gross. I saw in the theaters. It was like when I was like eighth grade, I went with my friends to a movie. My parents paid for it. Um, and then I have, uh, they live the aliens from they live. Um, uh, obviously, yeah. I'm a huge fan of that movie. Um, oh, you got a thumb up bubble. The next one, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna describe the alien. I don't really know what you would call it, but <clears throat> I said it was the Mexican birthday party alien from Signs. From Signs, yeah, 
remember when you first saw that? I don't know if anyone else even gave a shit, but when I first saw that movie, they showed that alien like walking across. It's like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that like, freaked me out. I watched it in Broadway. Yeah. And I that's said, a crazy. I went, what is happening? Yeah. Yeah. It had a huge impact. That one, that one alien shot. You're like, oh, my goodness gracious. That, yeah. That, that um, alien scared me. Yeah, Mexican birthday party. <laughs> Feliz cumpleaños. Uh, and the my number my number two alien is uh, the alien that Will Smith KO'd in uh, Independence Day. The good one, yeah. Yeah. No matter how badass these aliens were, Will Smith can knock one out. So that's the Chris Rock of aliens. I didn't choose <laughs> that. I didn't choose that because that was an exoskeleton, and there's a little tiny alien inside. Oh, I guess you're gonna kill me on you know technicality, dude. I'm sorry. Then I'll, well, I'll just say uh, the whole alien you know, thing. I'll say Mac and me. No, I hate yeah. that guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my, number one, I, I I had a predator. You know, we were we, I was a kid when I first saw that, and that thing scared the shit out of me. And then like after I got over being scared, I was like. Arnold's a beast. Mm -hmm. The whole crew of dudes are beefcakes. This movie's awesome, you know. <laughs> I, I so love imagining a young Joe going, "These dudes are beefcakes." <laughs> well, yeah, that's why you know, you know, take your shirt off, Rambo, and shoot that. <laughs> you know, everybody. You know, that's that's how you you, you know you got down. When we were younger. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's my uh, that's my top five aliens there. Everybody had a really good good list. Um, sorry that I didn't do as much uh, thought process into the into the EMI, but you know, hey, in five weeks I'll come or five months I'll come back with another one, a banger. I enjoyed it. Stop downing yourself. This was fun. Um, once you got into the aliens, like the aliens throughout movie history, you started remembering. Oh yeah, you know, I, I always thought I'm not picking Alien from Alien. You know, I'm not picking. Uh, they live, uh, and I thought, oh, Superman's a fucking alien. Yeah, you know, yeah. you start to remember that shit, you know. And then yeah. I remembered that movie, History of Future Folk, and I was like, oh, that guy. Yeah, like there were the easy grabs like Predator and Alien and all that stuff. But for me, like, like Chris was saying, as I was thinking about it, these things are more valuable to me. Like, I have an anecdote for every single one of these characters, you know. Yeah, it's I'm surprised. It's, like, I saw the batteries not included, guys, and I said, "Oh, okay, now we're getting deep." And Mac and me, of course, <laughs> just because of Conan O'Brien, Mac and me is always in my head. <laughs> where they played that one skit where the person goes over the cliff all the time <laughs> in the wheelchair. Every time they says, "Yeah, I brought a clip." of Somebody always, who was it? Paul Rudd always goes on there says, "Yeah, I brought a clip in my movie," and it's that one <laughs> going over the over the cliff. Uh, it is funny. It is funny. Uh, so I guess, uh, folks, that is... Oh, no, we're not done yet. We still have ratings to do. Shit, I forgot all about that part. All right, ratings. Let's go with uh, beep, boop, boop. Uh, Adam, hit us. Um, sick movie. Fun to watch. Um, um, at the same time doing this, um, you know, finish, cap it off with uh, de deployable or not. No, that's second. Oh, we're gonna do okay. We'll do two seconds. <laughs> don't don't mess with my editing. No, he... oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All these rules. Yeah, yeah. All these no rules and then rule. <laughs> I can make a bunch of rules. I could run this. Um, no, it's a it's a fun movie, sick movie, awesome. Everything, like I said, there's no. Everything goes flows. There's no fat on this movie. Is it, it, it was great. Uh, Nine point five. Oh, nice. Uh, let's go with uh, <clears throat> commercial. So I uh, I love this movie. I've always liked this movie. It's it's way up there. I can't own toys that I'm never going to open. And, uh, you know, go through all the trouble of, of cosplaying and, and come down on the movie. For all its faults, you know, it has two out of the three Bs, blood, beast, and boobs. I mean, I, th I think it takes care of two of those uh, pretty handily. So for me, 
this this movie is absolutely perfect and and i'm i'm doing it it's a 10 it's a 10 for me the second oh. 10 I'm doing it wow bam all right let's hear from uh andy sure um i think it's a good movie man like uh, you know um you know, granted, in the 2024 lenses of everything, and like, I mean, obviously, understanding that it is an older movie, um, to me, it, it holds up, I think. I think it still works. Um, it's a good concept. It's pretty well executed, everything. Yeah, I mean, eight and a half. Yeah. Right on, right on. Snow Brina. Hey. Um, so I think it's a really fun movie to watch. I really enjoyed it. Um, even though I had so many questions about so many of their decisions mm -hmm. and how this base operates and like <laughs> like there's some there's some plot holes and some backspace, but that's not what the movie's about, and I get it. Um, and they focused all their energy into making this movie what it's about, which were these aliens and all this commotion and distrust. Um, it does definitely hold up. Like, they don't do anything ridiculously offensive <laughs> to any persons in this movie. Um, eh, I think I'm just going to give it a, I'm going to give it a whole eight. I'll, I, I would watch it. It was enjoyable. Um, it gives me some, it's definitely something you can talk about. And it's hmm. apparently more quotable than I realized. <laughs> Chris. All right. Um, I, I liked this movie yesterday more than I've ever liked it before. I'm sitting there paying attention, writing down and it does like the mistrust comes in. I felt like I was married again. And I was thinking, I was like, okay, I know how that feels. I know what this air, you know? So I said, I really like this movie. And, and again, I paid attention to the special effects more this time. I don't even know if they're special effects since we hired an um, amputee, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm sitting they're there watching that, that. Yeah. Nothing special about the effects, but still gross and all of it saying just the dog's heads and the people's heads being part of this weird scorpion octopus um i'm giving it a nine dixie cups i like this movie more now than from the first time i watched it the last time i watched it to yesterday cult classic uh i think the people who reviewed it are idiots and like i said i never trust movie reviewers i don't know how they got that job that wasn't <laughs> offered to me on the career sheet in high school but you just start doing it bro you just gotta do it it's uh yeah what about you joe how do you feel well um this is actually i think the only time i've ever picked a movie that i would say that is in my <clears throat> you know like maybe like top 20 movies that i enjoy um with that being said <clears throat> the gore is a little over you know over 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 the top but i mean not in a, in a not in a bad way at all really uh because it's alien blood man i feel different about it uh <laughs> yeah. it's got possibly like my i go through phases where kurt russell's not my favorite actor but then like three days later i wake up and i'm like what were you thinking dude <laughs> uh, <laughs> So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go nine point five. Uh, the only way we could have better is if it would have been like a western. I don't know. Like I mean, like a dragon. Like, I, I love I love westerns a, a, a whole lot. Uh, but, but this movie's but this this movie's got a helicopter. There's no horses, but there's a flamethrower. So that kind of well, that's that's your dragon. That's your dragon. You, oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> So all I'm missing is a horse. Uh, but the yeah, I'll tell you, uh, it's it's a cool movie, and uh, it's I, it's always exciting to see somebody that's never seen it before, or if they have seen it, but they're like, it was like you know, like ten years ago, because ten years ago generally means like fifteen or twenty. <laughs> uh, you know, at, at, at my advanced age, uh, so 
Yeah, uh, it, you know, it's always fun to sit down with somebody that's never seen it before and watch this and, uh, you know, try to contain your own, you know, like spoiler alert nonsense you want to do or anything like that, or even talk too much about it in front of, I still, I, I like the idea of like, you know, no spoilers at all. And, you know, and, and, like, you know, I, I, Six Sense might be a little different because everybody should have seen it by now because it was that huge. But, you know, at this point in time, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that have not seen this movie because it is from 1982. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's nine and a half. It's, it's fun. It's fun to share this with other people. Um, yeah, I tried to. I uh, guess that. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I tried to get my son to watch this with me. I go back in his room. He sits there and plays video games all weekend. And I say, hey, I said, I'm watching a movie from my movie group. It's called The Thing. I said, it's one of these movies you have to watch to say that you were raised properly. <laughs> and I, he goes, what's it about? I said, it's about these aliens taking over this uh, ice station in Antarctica. And it starts, I said, it, it turns into all these people. I said, it's pretty gross. He's like, I don't want to see that kind of stuff. And I was like, you've just killed three people as I'm standing here. <laughs> <laughs> He just bashed a hooker's head in with a baseball. Yeah, he's like, I just headshotted you, dude. <laughs> well, you just killed three people right now. I don't... That's funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you know, he's still young. You got to catch him at the right time to when they're, you know, mentally ready to, to wrap their minds around this movie. Because this is just something you can just pop on for a child. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have to be ready. They have to be willing to accept the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that leads us up to, uh, you know, is it a deployable movie? Would you, is that where we're going now? Is that good? Correct. Okay, cool. <laughs> like, so, uh, we'll this. do, I know, I didn't know, I didn't know, uh, I didn't know if I let into it the right way. It up. Uh, all right. So is this deployable? Let's start it off with Herschel. <laughs> I didn't know. know. <laughs> I did not I think uh, I think my answer is going to be pretty obvious. Uh, being that the last time you know Chris here saw it was on deployment, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're basically they're on a ship. Just replace snow for uh, for ocean, and they're on a ship, and you're killing aliens. And uh, yeah, what? Why? Well, how could it be anything other than deployable? So all that together, it's a yes. Yes, it's deployable. <laughs> There's All right. <laughs> Sabrina? Yes, deployable. Bam. That's it. <laughs> Look at that. Andy? Yeah, I could, uh, like, I was watching it, and, like, I can totally see this, like, 9, 10 o'clock, whatever. Taps hits. Everybody's chilling out and birthing. Kick it on in the lounge. People start rolling in. Oh, man, things on. This is not yes, a chill movie. Hundred percent. Oh. And there's that one guy on the couch that hasn't seen it. Everyone's like, yo, this dickhead hasn't seen the thing before. <laughs> Let's get his reactions. Yeah. Uh Chris. Since Herschel and I deployed it many times, every time we went out to sea, this was in the DVD case. <laughs> uh it definitely is deployable. You're on the mess decks, everybody's making a lot of noise, and this is on the TV, you're gonna notice those aliens. So, 100%. Adam? Yeah, man. What, under two-hour movie? No no filler? And it, it promotes discussion on the mess decks. Like, you, you, we're just talking about who who was infected, when were they infected, you know. Just so much discussion. Absolutely, 100% a deployable movie. And I have to agree. <clears throat> I mean, everything about it is deployable i like andy's little scenario he created there because that, that's how i see it playing out you know you walk by you're like man it's got a shower oh shit i got my towel on i'm about to go back to bed Ooh, things on i'll stand in the doorway in my towel for a half an hour you open your <laughs> towel you open your towel and go what about this thing what about this, <laughs> this thing no <laughs> So he's he's done that him. before, Sabrina, so that's why. No, that's not, that's not I don't true. want to admit, no. That's not more of a cold move. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, obviously this is certified deployable. Uh, 
<laughs> everybody, everybody mm. loves it. Duty. In fact, everybody did love this movie. That's pretty exciting. That almost never happens. Yeah, everybody had very. I'm glad. I'm glad even the even the new folks. <laughs> and then there were you know. Me too. Good start to season. Unfamiliar, yeah. unfamiliar waters. I told Adam I was, was like, like this last season was not a great one for me. I thought like I was kept waiting for a movie to be like yes, I love it. So I was really excited to start this season. Did off. you not watch Blade? <laughs> no, I watched Blade. That was like the only one that I like. <laughs> Rated higher than a seven, probably. You I, had a you had the sophomore slump. That's all. Yes, you always I bounce back. Like, I don't know how year. I deal with all these. <laughs> your like, third season, you'll be fine. Right. Uh, now, um, with uh, I don't know exactly uh, what the next step here is in the in the evolution of uh, episode to episode Earth. two or what we're doing yeah. next. Um, I don't even know who's picking next. God knows you don't want to get yelled at. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, Adam, what Adam brings doing? the hammer of. <laughs> but uh, let's. Uh, I guess uh, Adam, I'll just you know do your thing, bro. Yeah, we're uh, bypassing the the wheel spin this year. Okay, we're just going straight categories. We're doing all eighties first, and Herschel, you're setting the pace or setting the the order here. Uh, sure, sure, we can call it that. Um, well, I mean, he said it because he did horror, and you know, since since this would uh, everybody enjoyed it, see, horror just brings people together. You guys been sitting <laughs> on it all this time, is that it what brings it people together? Give us your so, yeah, genre. Yeah. So, that being said, Joe, that, pay attention. That being said, do you guys like action movies? Never watched, yeah, them. yeah, of course. All right, how about yeah. comedy movies? How about yeah. drama? Oh, mm. yes. How about movies about finding your true love and fighting for your true love? You did ghost Gator. stories. Is Jovers the one Gator? <laughs> ghost stories? Do hmm. you dig Kung Fu? I'm so confused. How about movies where the director sings the theme song? Is there a movie with all of these things? There is a movie with all of these <laughs> things, and thank God you asked. From 1986, in he, uh, keeping with what I hope is a theme, John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> oh no, this will be the second time I've watched this movie. Second time. say something. Uh, we've seen some and Kurt Russell movies. The first time was because group, huh? it was a movie club that Adam had me in. It's. I mean, we can start talking about it now. If, yeah, if why not? Want. Let's just roll I mean, into it. We, we can't. Oh, no. I think everybody's seen it. I haven't watched it this year, but I mean, I think I saw it last year. You haven't seen it in a while, you're going to enjoy it. Big trouble, uh, little China. I mean, it's, it's, it's primarily an action, right? Yeah. I mean, it's whatever you want to call it. I no, think. Well, I need to know. <laughs> for the, so, for the sake of the movie club, I need to know. Action movie. Okay. Sure, we'll call it action. <laughs> if, if that's. If that's uh, if that's what moves the conversation along. Herschel's um, just taken over. He's like, nope, I've got all the next for the rest <laughs> Which uh, does bring me, so I like the cruise book thing, and I, I, there's quite a bit to quote in this here flick. So uh, so there's that. And lists have to have a top five, right? Yes. But, but oh. how about if we have a top five that has two distinct categories? Uh-oh. So... Your top three movies that could fit into multiple genres, categories, whatever you want to call it. Because I really think this movie, you, you could call it action, you could call it comedy, you could call it whatever. Top three multi-genre films. Multi-genre. Look at you with the fancy talk. Just thought I'd let you, you know, if you want to use that. <laughs> you can. You can. And since everybody uh, loves Kurt Russell... The other two in your list, two movies that you've seen that should have had a sequel. What is and that I bring Kurt Russell that? up. <laughs> What's that? I bring it up because there should have been another Jack Burton movie. But <laughs> is that this guy's the the main character? That is his character. Oh, okay. <laughs> <It's> like a... <laughs> 
So you have a five, you have a list of five. It's just two categories because like I said, this one fits. There is no mold for this movie. It's all over the Three place. Three multi-genre movies and two movies with... That, that should, should have had... Or you would have liked it. to have seen a sequel. Not everything can be the Marvel Universe where we're going to milk it dry. Right. All right, Herschel, I got my top two movies for sequels. <laughs> right, are you you want to go over that now? <laughs> <laughs> if you wish. It's uh, up to you. <gasps> is this the first movie that we've all seen? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe. The Cobra poster over there. Oh, I'm pretty after, sure we've all seen this movie. Who picks after Herschel? Um, Adam. Oh, okay. You you pick. We go back around. Adam, Andy, Sabrina. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Did the guy who was just chastising people about the rules ask the next person to go? I'm yeah. just checking. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Do you want to close this out, Joe? Uh... <laughs> I don't really know how. To, how do you want me to close you out? I say, uh, say good night, everybody. Oh, <laughs> say good night, everybody. Take a bow. Take good night, everybody. Okay. Good okay. night. Just bye. Fair winds and following seas. Take it sleazy. <laughs>